So realistically, exponential growth can't go on forever. Um, other things are going to play into that. For instance, you can't have bacteria just kind of grow without having limited resources, um, food, water, space, prevent uncontrolled growth. So we have other growth models that um, that that you that we can use. And these ones are not particularly standardized. So one example says the rate at which a population increases is directly proportional to the square root of the population. This is kind of like that last worksheet, that short worksheet from yesterday that, ha that kind of previews this. Um, it wants you to write a differential equation. This is really easy if you just kind of think about what it's doing. The rate at which a population increases, dy dt, is directly proportional, equals to k times something, to the square root of the population, k times the square root of y. Then it says to solve the differential equation subject to these initial conditions. So first, like before, we want to get the y's by itself. So dy over radical y equals k dt. And then we're going to take the integral of both sides. Um, well, this is really the integral of y to the negative 1 half dy. And this is the integral of k dt. And the integral of y to the negative 1 half is, um, that would be, over one half, so this would be two y to the positive one half, uh, which is really two radical y equals kt. Uh, and if I solve for radical, uh, sorry, plus c, plus a constant, and if I solve for radical y, uh, I'm going to get radical y is equal to kt over two plus. Now I could put c over two, but I'm just going to put c, and I'm going to relabel that c one. Um, so this is just a different constant. You know, anytime I manipulate a constant, I can do that. And then um, if I square both sides, I'm going to get y is equal to kt over 2 plus c quantity squared. Um, then it says, subject to the initial condition that y of 0 is 25 and y of 5 is 100. Well, if I just take this first one and plug in 25 is equal to c squared, I'm going to get c is equal to 5. Um, now, that tells me what the constant is. Um, then I'm going to have y is equal to kt over 2 plus 5 squared. And I'm going to plug this one in to try to figure out what k is. Basically, it's like a two equations, two unknowns. That's why we had two of these. I need to define what c is and what k is. So that's why I have two initial points. And that first one just lets me find C really quick. And the second one, once I found the C, I'm going to plug in 100 for Y equals to 5K over 2 uh, plus 5 quantity squared. Um, let's take the positive square root of both sides. I get 100, or 10 is equal to 5 halves K plus 5. Um, I get 5 is equal to 5K over 2. Um, and this is just going to get me k is equal to 2. So solving the differential equation gets me a final version of y is equal to, uh, this would be t plus 5 squared. Just for the purposes of, of seeing what this looks like, this is actually a parabola um, that has a y-intercept of uh, 25, but an x-intercept of, of negative 5. So it's going to look something like this. And we're only talking about that part right there. Um, so it's it sort of looks like an exponential growth, but it's not quite the same. Uh, what is the size of the population after 15 weeks? Well, if I go back to what t is, it says t is measured in weeks. So I know that y is equal to 15 plus 5 quantity squared, and that would be 400 people. And then when will the population reach 1,000? Well, that's 1,000 equals t plus 5 squared. And so t would be equal to, that'd be the square root of 1,000 is 10 root 10, uh, then minus 5, and that's about 26.6 weeks. Moving along, uh, Newton's law of cooling says that the rate at which the temperature of an object decreases is proportional to the difference between the temperature and the temperature of its environment, which is a constant. Then it says the cup of, cup of coffee is placed in a room that is 21 degrees Celsius. Um, 
and we're going to use this temperature in degrees Celsius here. I know you're used to Kelvins, but it's just a difference, so it's going to be okay. Um, dt over dt, so d capital T over d lowercase t, is equal to, it's directly proportional to the difference between the temperature of the object and the temperature of its environment. So temperature of the object is capital T, and temperature of its environment was 21. So that's our differential equation. Split that. Uh, dt over t minus 21 is equal to k d lowercase t. Um, take the integral of both sides, and I'm going to get the natural log of t minus 21. Um, absolute value is equal to kt plus c. Um, given that the temperature of the coffee is 85 degrees after one minute, well, like before, I need two order pairs. Um, so I know that after one minute, it's 85 uh, degrees Celsius, and I know at zero minutes, it's 95 degrees Celsius. So let's just start with this one, 0, 095. Uh, if I plug it in, I get ln of 95 minus 21 equals C. So ln of 74 is equal to C. And plugging that back in, I'm going to get uh, ln of t minus 21 equals uh, t ln of 74 plus c. And if I take e to the uh, both sides, exponentiate both sides of the base e, I get t minus 21 is equal to, um, this is going to be, for reasons that we've done before, 74. Um, Oops, my bad, I'm plugging in in the wrong place. This is e to the kt plus ln of 74. So that comes out, yeah, that's 74 e to the kt. Um, and then t is equal to 74 e to the kt plus 21. Um, now I just need to figure out what k is. So if I plug in 185, I get 85 is equal to 74 e to the, uh, see, t is 1, so that'd be e to the k, plus 21, or 64 is equal to 74 e to the k, um, divide 74, I get 32 37 equals e to the k, or k is equal to the natural log of 32 37 so how's this play in? Uh, we'll plug it back in. I get capital T is equal to 74 e to the k, or sorry, e to the ln of 32 37 t plus 21. And simplifying, that's t is equal to 74 times 32 37 to the t plus 21. Then how many minutes will it take for the coffee to cool to 51 degrees Celsius? Uh, let's go 51 is equal to 74 times 32 37 to the t plus 21. Um, subtract and divide, and I'm going to get uh, 30 74 which is 15 37 uh, equals 32 37 to the t power solve for t and I get t is equal to the ln of 15 37 over the ln of 32 37 that's going to be about 6.21 or sorry 6.22 minutes moving along sometimes you just kind of have to read this directly the volume of the sphere is increasing at a rate proportional to its reciprocal of its radius so volume of the sphere is, sphere is increasing, so dv dt um, is increasing at a rate that is proportional to the reciprocal of its radius, that's 1 over r. One of the tricks with this one is that um, I don't really have an r, v, I need a relationship between r and v, because I have r here and v here, so what I need to do is just do a quick little V equals, um, and the volume of the sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed, and that's just a relationship between volume and radius. 
um, and I need to solve one or the other, well, let's just replace, and I have dv dt equals 4 pi r squared dr dt. So I can basically take this and substitute it in for this. Um, and then in the next step, uh, I can say, as I start to work this around, 4 pi r squared dr dt is equal to k over r. And now let's start to move some things around. Um, if I have, let's see, 4 pi r cubed dr equals k dt. Now I can integrate both sides pretty safely. Um, this ends up with 4, or just pi r to the fourth. Um, and this is just kt. So, um, kt, sorry, plus c. Then let's look at what the order of pairs it gives me. At t equals 0, radius is 1. And at t equals 15, radius is 2. So 0, 1 is an ordered pair. Plug that in. I'm going to get pi is equal to c. And then let's go back to the pi r to the fourth is equal to kt plus pi. And plug in the second order pair, 15, 2. So that would be pi times 2 to the fourth equals uh, 15k plus pi. And I want to solve for, for k. So this gives me 16 pi is equal to 15k plus pi, or 15 pi is equal to 15k, or k is equal to pi. So putting that back in, um, just right here, pi r to the fourth is equal to pi t plus a constant, or sorry, not plus c, plus uh, pi. Um, let's see. The neat thing about this is that pi is everywhere in here, so it can, you can get rid of it. And I get r to the fourth is equal to t plus 1. Um, or r is equal to the fourth root of t plus 1, or t plus 1 to the 1 fourth. Uh, then it says, at what time will the volume of the sphere be 27 times its volume at t equals 0? Well, I know that at t equals 0, the uh, radius equals, the radius is 1. Um, and then 27 times its volume, well, if, if its radius is 1, then the, uh, hang on just a second. I'm going to skip ahead and recall a little bit of geometry. If the radius is 1, and I want the volume to be 27 times, uh, that meant that the radius has to be 3 times, because volume is a cubed operation, and radius is a linear operation. So. Um, Remember the relationship that if I triple the radius, I, um, it, or if I multiply the radius by 3, I'd actually multiply by 3 squared for the area, the surface area, and 3 cubed for the volume. Um, basically, this comes down to proportions. I'm, I'm actually going from a 1 to 3, but I want to cube that and actually make it a 1 to 27. Well, I'm kind of working my way backwards. Um, I can prove that by saying uh, if I want the volume to be 27 times, We'll figure out what the volume is at r at radius is equal to 1. So the volume would be 4 thirds pi times r cubed, which would just be 4 thirds pi. Um, and then if I want to multiply that by 27, say, OK, so 27 times that would be 27 times that, which would be 36 pi. Um, and then I work my way backwards and say, well, what's the radius at 36 pi? 36 pi is 4 thirds pi r cubed and I would end up with a radius of 3. So, you know, I'm going to put that in parentheses, but however you get it, I want my, I want, I basically want to know what, at what time will the radius be 3. So I can just use the previous equation. Um, 3 is equal to the fourth root of t plus 1. Uh, raise both sides to the fourth power, so 81 is equal to t plus 1, uh, and t would be 80. Okay, next one. New employee performs a job more efficiently each day. The rate at which the employee 
you can make y widgets per day after t days on the job is directly proportional to 80 minus the number of widgets produced. Um, well, if it's proportional to 80 minus the number of widgets produced, I'm going to say dy dt is equal to k times 80 minus y. Um, solve this, so I've got dy over 80 minus y equals k dt. Integrate both sides. Um, and I would get, let's see, if I do the integral of the left side, I have to count for the negative in front of the y. You can do a u substitution if you want to. We're going to end up with negative ln of 80 minus y equals kt plus a constant. Um, this is a good point, place to kind of check what order pairs do I have. Um, at t equals 0, I have 20 widgets. And at t equals 10, I have 50 widgets. So if I do the 0, 20 first, I'm going to get the negative ln of 60 equals the constant. And so if I plug that back in, I'm going to get the negative ln of 80 minus y equals kt minus ln of 60. Um, so let's switch the signs. ln of 80 minus y is equal to negative kt plus the ln of 60. Uh, and if I make both sides a power of e, I'm going to get 80 minus y is equal to, uh, this is going to be 60 e to the negative kt, or y is equal to, uh, that would be negative 60 e to the negative kt plus 80. Let's get more space here. Um, now I need to use the second order pair to figure out what k is. So I plug in 50 for y, and I have negative 60 e to the negative 10t, sorry, negative 10k, plus 80. Um, to subtract, you get negative 30, divide by negative 60, so I'm going to get 1 half equals e to the negative 10k. Uh, take the ln of both sides, ln of 1 half equals negative 10k. There's a little algebra trickery we can do here. Remember, the ln of 1 half is the same as the negative ln of 2 equals negative 10k. So k is equal to the ln of 2 over 10. And let's see, if I put that back, um, I'm trying to see if I want to keep it positive like that. Hang on. Now, because when I put it back, I want it to cancel the negative out, so we're going to leave it as the negative ln of 1 half. And I'm just going to leave this and move that up there. You can kind of cross out or delete what you need. So if I plug it back in, you see what happens is I, I'm plugging it right in there, so I get y is equal to negative 60 e to the, the negatives cancel. I'm going to get ln of 1 half times t over 10. Um, and then plus 80. And that's going to simplify to y is equal to negative 60 times 1 half to the t, t over 10 plus 80. Um, then we got the typical string of questions. How many widgets per day produced after 30 days on the job? So this is just a matter of plugging 30 in. So we've got y is equal to negative 60 times 1 half. Uh, 30 over 10 would be 3 plus 80. So y is equal to, um, this would be negative 60 divided by, divided by 8, that would be negative 15 halves, plus 80, which is, that's negative 7.5, so like 72.5 widgets. And then after how many days will the employees be producing 70 widgets? So I've got 70 is equal to negative 60 times 1 half to the t over 10 plus 80. So if I subtract and divide, I'm going to get 1 sixth is equal to 1 half 
t to the tenth or to the t over ten. Uh, that's going to solve with an t is equal to, if I take the natural log of both sides, um, work it around, divide, and I'll let you do that part. We get uh, 10 times the ln of 1 sixth over the ln of 1 half, um, which is going to be 25.85 days.